Halfland, an ahistorical prehistory. The Battle of Edwinham. In the year 99 of the Common Reckoning, Orm, the Lord of Dwarfbridge, supported by the halflings, marched on Overwater and burned it to the ground. Grimbold, the Warden of Overwater, fled south and rallied the Skeldings to the west of the Silver Stream to him before marching back north. He encountered the forces of Orm to the south of Overwater at a place called Edwinham. Edwinham was so named because a Skelding called Edwin had built his longhouse there. In front of the longhouse, fields ran up to the foot of a small hill, and to its right was an area of woodland. Otherwise, the ground was flat and open. Grimbald had about 150 spearmen, half of whom wore mail, all with shields. He took personal command of these troops, which he stationed in the field immediately to the front of the longhouse. In the fields beyond, he placed his light infantry, 100 unarmoured men armed with javelins, sword and shield. In the woods, he placed 150 archers and concealed behind the trees his force of 125 heavy cavalry, some armed with lances and some with sword and throwing spears. Orm's army consisted of 200 dwarves. Half of these were mail-clad shield-bearing spear dwarves, while the remainder also wore armour, but carried crossbows. He was accompanied by nearly 300 spear halflings, and 250 halfling skirmishers, armed with a mixture of bows and slings. These halfling skirmishers marched in the van of Orm's army, followed by the spear halflings, under a large green banner. Orm and the dwarves brought up the rear. The army advanced toward the longhouse across the face of the forest. As it did so, the halfling slingers formed a screen between the body of the army and Grimbald's archers lurking on the edge of the woods. This screen was positioned so that the scalding archers were within slingshot of the halfling slingers, but the halfling slingers were not within bowshot of the Skelding archers. Slingstone started to fly past the Skelding archers, who prudently withdrew into the trees, where they could not be so targeted. Meanwhile, the halfling archers, followed by the spear halflings, pressed on. Behind them, the dwarves also continued to advance, but at a more stately pace. And now the halfling archers were within bowshot of the Skelding light infantry and began to loose arrows at them. Deciding that attack is the best form of defence and relying on their shields for protection, the Skelding light infantry vaulted over the dry stone wall in front of them and rushed toward the halfling archers, raining javelins upon them to lethal effect. Before the stricken halflings could gather themselves, the Skeldings had unsheathed their swords and were upon them, and the ensuing hand-to-hand -hand fight did not go well for the halflings. Orm observed this, and, wishing to come to the halflings' assistance, he ordered the screen of slingers to move forward so his dwarves could pass to its rear. But this move brought the slingers within bowshot of the woods. Observing this, the Skelding archers resumed their position at the forest edge, and an exchange of sling stones and arrows ensued. Orm's advance was slow, and the spear halflings did not wait for him to arrive. Even as the few surviving halfling archers fled past them, the spear halflings charged into the victorious Skelding light infantry. The charge of the spear halflings was brutally effective. Those Skelding Light Infantry who were still living fled back the way they had come, leaving their dead behind them. And now Grimbold ordered his spearmen forward, advancing from the fields where they had been waiting, marching steadily toward the spear halflings. The halfling archers collected themselves and, 
seeing that their sling-armed companions were having the worst of the duel with the scalding archers, advanced to their assistance. And now the scalding spearmen had formed up in grim ranks, silently facing their halfling counterparts. And then Grimbald gestured to the man at his side, who raised a horn to his lips, and three times the horn was sounded. With a jingle of harness and a rumble of hoofbeats, the Skelding cavalry rode out from behind the forest. The dwarves stopped in their tracks, pivoting to face this new threat, with the crossbow dwarves to the front and the spear dwarves behind them. No sooner had the echoes of the horn died away than with a mighty cry the spear halflings charged headlong into the Skelding spearmen. Initially, the halflings had some success, but it did not last. The remaining Skelding light infantry came to the assistance of the spearmen, and the longer reach of the Skelding spears proved decisive. Many spear halflings were slain, and many fled, and the Skelding spearmen pushed forward to finish those who still stood their ground. The leader of the Skelding cavalry was Sigbert, a carefree young man of high birth. He rode up and down the column of his advancing horsemen, singing songs of the mighty warriors of old. This made him rather conspicuous, and his singing soon stopped, when he was simultaneously shot by several dwarvish crossbows. The Skelding cavalry responded by advancing directly toward the dwarvish ranks, but they were shaken by the loss of their leader, and their advance was hesitant rather than threatening. They did not seek to close with the dwarves, but halted some distance away, limiting themselves to ineffectually hurling a few javelins in the dwarves' general direction. The dwarves responded with a single volley of crossbow bolts, and then, even while skewered skeldings were still sliding senseless from their saddles, the spear dwarves advanced through the crossbow dwarves in front of them, presenting a menacing wall of spear points, marching resolutely toward the cavalry and then into them, and more skelding horsemen fell dead. On the other side of the battlefield, the bearer of the banner of the spear halflings had run from the initial onslaught of the scalding spearmen, but now he composed himself and returned to the fray, and many of his colleagues followed his example. For a moment it almost seemed as though the spear halflings could turn the battle in their favour, but it was not to be. Once more the halflings failed to get past the scalding spear points. The banner bearer and those that had followed him perished. The few remaining spear halflings formed a circle, spears outward, surrounded by skeldings who wished them nothing but harm. Despite the arrival of the halfling archers, the halfling slingers were still losing their fight with the skelding archers. Discouraged by this, and observing the fate of the spear halflings, the halfling skirmishers decided that their aspirations to reconquer the lands to the south of Overwater had come to nothing, and they withdrew. But Orm had not yet given up the fight. He urged his dwarves to a final effort. The crossbow dwarves turned their attention to the Skelding archers, exchanging missiles and casualties with them, while the spear dwarves redoubled their assault on the Skelding cavalry. A few of the horsemen galloped out of the fight, riding back toward Grimbold and his spearmen. The spear dwarves slew the rest, and even at that moment the Skelding archers ran out of arrows and started to fall back into the trees. Grimbold ordered his forces to fall back to the fields and regroup. As the Skeldings withdrew, the few remaining spear halflings took their opportunity and made their escape. Orm, too, regathered his forces and reviewed the situation. His halfling allies had disappeared. 
his crossbow dwarves were unlikely to have much impact on the scalding spearmen, sheltered as they were behind the dry stone walls of the fields. And he did not have enough spear dwarves to be confident of besting the surviving scaldings in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Reluctantly, he ordered his dwarves to retreat from the field and led them back to overwater. Thus ended the Battle of Edwinham.